Uh, thank you, Professor Ito. Uh, I'm Rui Hirano. Today I'm going to give a talk on a, a photoluminescent study of the driving force uh, for stacking force expansion in 4H uh, silicon carbide. Uh, as an introduction, I would like to talk about the phenomena of the stacking force expansions uh, induced by the uh, intensive laser illuminations. Uh, this graph shows the uh, photoluminescent spectra uh, before and uh, uh, before and after uh, re uh, intensive laser illuminations. A remarkable uh, uh, increase of the photoluminescence peak arising from the uh, shock stacking falls uh, was observed after the uh, intensive laser illuminations. And these are the uh, intensity maps of the uh, photoluminescence uh, uh, or originated from the uh, shock stacking falls. Uh, after excitation laser uh, scan in these white box areas, uh, shock wave stacking falls uh, in a, imaged in a white contrast span like this. And this is the magnified image of this uh, white box areas. Uh, such an uh, expansion of the shock wave stacking falls is achieved by the uh, grid of the partial dislocations uh, induced by the uh, uh, laser illuminations. Uh, this so-called uh, radiation enhanced dislocation grid, uh, let me call it uh, REDG in short, uh, was observed uh, in not only in foreign silicon carbide, but also the uh, silicon, guy and so on. However, uh, detailed mechanism of the uh, REDG is still not well understood. Uh, but since the uh, partial dislocations uh, that exhibits the uh, REDG in foreign silicon carbide uh, have been well identified as a, a 30 degree silicon partial dislocations. The study of the uh, REDG in 4 H silicon carbide may make it possible to elucidate the fundamental mechanism of the uh, REDG. <coughs> According to the uh, previous study uh, on a uh, gallium phosphide and gallium arsenide, the uh, RED, REDG is characterized by the uh, uh, almost linear dependence on a, uh, of the dislocation grade velocity uh, on a excitation intensity. In contrast, in the uh, present study of the foreign silicon carbide, we found, as I show you later, the dislocation grade velocity is quite nonlinearly dependent on the excitation intensity. In order to uh, understand these uh, peculiar results, uh, I'm going to uh, propose the uh, contributions of the uh, excitation intensity dependent, uh, dependent uh, driving force for the uh, uh, shock stacking force expansions in 4 h silicon carbide and discuss the origin of the driving force of the uh, uh, dis uh, dislocation grid. Then I would like to talk about uh, some details of the uh, sample we used. Uh, the sample has the unpotential layers of uh, uh, five micrometer in thickness doped with the uh, nitrogen in concentrations of uh, 5.3 times 10 to the 15th per cubic centimeters. And the epitaxial layer was grown on a substrate at the 8 degree of cut angles towards the uh, 1, 1, 2 bar 0 directions. And uh, this is the experimental setup for the uh, photoluminescence mapping. We used a 266 uh, nanometer line of the quadrature to nadine wide four lasers as the excitation source. The uh, excitation uh, laser spot was focused on uh, uh, about two micrometers on a sample surface by using the objective. And the photoluminescence from the sample uh, passed through the band pass filter to select, to select the uh, shock stacking for related emissions at the 2.9 electron volt and detected by a uh, photomultiplier tube. We also measure the uh, photoluminescent spectra to estimate the uh, sample temperatures uh, under the uh, intensive laser illuminations. Uh, the 266 nanometer line of uh, excitation laser uh, was focused on the sample surface 
in the same manner as for the uh, uh, photoluminescence mapping. And the photoluminescence from the sample was guided to the uh, spectrometer by using uh, optical fibers. Uh, then I would like to uh, move on to the uh, uh, experimental <coughs> results. These are the uh, uh, photoluminescence maps uh, in the same areas. Uh, we intentionally uh, introduced the dislocation source by scratching the sample surface uh, with the diamond scrapers. These uh, brown bands uh, indicate this uh, scratch. As you can see that the uh, uh, shock stacking faults uh, in a white contrast uh, expand as the uh, excitation laser scanning was repeated. Then uh, we select uh, one of the uh, shock stacking faults and measure the uh, excitation intensity dependence of the dislocation graded velocity. This shows the, uh, how to measure the uh, velocity of the dislocation grade in photoluminescence mapping measurement. Uh, first, the excitation uh, laser swept along with the elongated directions of the shock stacking faults uh, to induce its expansions. And uh, this uh, PL profile was obtained. The horizontal axis indicates the uh, laser beam positions, and the vertical axis indicates the photoluminescence intensity. We repeated these cycles several times to obtain uh, these series of the uh, photoluminescence profiles. Uh, this green arrow indicates the length of the shock stacking for expansions uh, during the one scans. The dislocation graph velocity is deduced by the uh, averaging advancing uh, distance of the uh, shock stacking for uh, front uh, divided by the uh, uh, effective elimination time. And this bugle shows the excitation intensity dependence of the uh, grad velocity of 30 second partial dislocations uh, bounds, in, bounds uh, uh, on the shock stacking falls. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, as you can see that the uh, dislocation grad velocity increase with the uh, excitation in, uh, intensity uh, quite non-linearly. Non then uh, a trivial cause you might suspect, a trivial cause of the, this uh, non-linearity you might suspect is the uh, rise of the uh, sample temperatures under the intense laser emissions. Uh, they, uh, therefore, we estimate the uh, sample temperatures, uh, the possible sample temperature under the uh, re uh, intense laser illuminations uh, by analyzing the spectral broadening of the band edge emissions. And this uh, graph shows the photoluminescence spectrum of the band edge emission of 4HC concarbide. And these dots are the uh, experimental data. It is known that the uh, band emission, emission can be uh, fitted by the Maxwell-Boltzmann, uh, some of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution functions uh, expressed by these equations, uh, which indicate is the uh, spec, uh, spectral wide increase with the temperatures. Therefore, we could estimate the uh, sample, temp uh, sample temperatures under the uh, intensive emissions from uh, uh, fit uh, from a curve fitting uh, using a uh, uh, t as a, as a um, uh, adjustable parameters, and this uh, view graph shows the uh, uh, sample temperatures uh, under the various excitation intensities. As you can see, that the sample temperature increase with the uh, increasing the excitation intensities. However, it did, uh, it did not exceed, it, uh, exceed uh, 330 kelvins. According to the actuation energies uh, experimentally measured by uh, Idrissi and his co-workers, the uh, partial grade dislocation velocity uh, activated, uh, purely activated uh, at the 370 kelvin would be only uh, 10 to the uh, minus 15 uh, meter per seconds. 
uh, which is far lower than the uh, dislocation grade velocity uh, experiment I observed in these studies. Uh, therefore, we conclude that the heating effect is negligible uh, and they're not the cause of the uh, nonlinearity in this uh, present study. Uh, according to the uh, previous study on uh, uh, ordinary materials, uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, dislocation uh, velocity regardless the uh, enhanced, irradi enhanced irradiations the <coughs> Uh, external uh, is uh, dependent on uh, linearly uh, on external pressure stress. And if the uh, radiation enhanced, uh, uh, it uh, linearly dependent on excitation intensity. This and this bugle shows the uh, shear stress and uh, uh, excitation intensity dependent of the dislocation grade velocities. Thus, in the uh, case of the ordinary materials, dislocation grade velocity is uh, expressed by these equations. The first term, the uh, shear stress, uh, representing the uh, driving, fo uh, driving force, uh, which is basically uh, independent on the excitation intensity. And the second factor is uh, <coughs> uh, linearly dependent on uh, excitation intensity in a uh, uh, REDG effect. In the case of the foreign-age silicon carbide, however, uh, the dislocation, uh, grade based, uh, dislocation uh, partial dislocations are not driven by uh, shear stress. And this uh, electrical uh, luminescence uh, image shows the uh, uh, partial dislocations uh, in a white contrast uh, driven without shear stress. The partial uh, dislocations uh, in such a, uh, directions to expand the shock crest like in falls. Uh, and, and it is also known that uh, the shock crest like in falls, once expanded by forward biasing, uh, shrink back uh, by uh, heating samples in dark, uh, as shown in this uh, year image. Uh, therefore, the uh, driving force for the glide of uh, enhanced glide of partial dislocations is the uh, formation energy of the shock crest stacking force, uh, which is the pos uh, positive uh, on dark, but tends to be uh, negative only during the electric excitations by forward biasing uh, or uh, excitation uh, laser illuminations. Uh, the possible mechanism of the uh, uh, sign reversal of the foreign emission energy was first proposed by a group of Miao. In their models, the uh, electron trapping to the uh, shock crest stacking force, uh, which forms uh, quantum wave like potentials, uh, effectively lowers the uh, thermal equilibrium formation energies. Uh, but, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, some criticism that the uh, electron charge up uh, might prevent the, uh, <coughs> might prevent the uh, further uh, trapping of electrons. But we think uh, this difficulty can be avoided by taking into account the uh, capture of the charge compensating hole as well. Uh, thus, the, uh, in the case of foreign silicon carbides, the uh, formation energy of the shock crest stacking force uh, is expressed by these equations, uh, where rho is the density of the electron hole pairs trapped at, at the uh, shock crest stacking force, and the alpha uh, uh, efficiency factor for energy lowering. And since the uh, effective formation energy of the shock crest stacking force acting as the uh, effective driving force, the dislocation gravity velocity is. Uh, is proportional to the uh, two factors. The first factor is the driving force. Uh, now uh, it uh, depends on the uh, excitation intensity. And the second factor is really dependent on the uh, uh, excitation intensity representing the uh, RIDG effect. Therefore, the dislocation gravity is expressed by these equations. If we assume that the uh, 
this towns dominate this uh, driving force and the uh, electron hole uh, density of the electron hole trapping is proportional to the excitation intensity. The dislocation velocity is proportional to the square of the uh, excitation intensity. Uh, thus, the uh, uh, dislocation uh, uh, this uh, sorry uh, this uh, spiralinear dependent of the uh, dislocation velocity on the uh, excitation intensity. Experimentally observed, uh, which suggests that this assumption is valid, and the uh, uh, driving force of the uh, dislocation grid in 4 HC concarbide is the uh, reduction of the effective formation energy of the shock stacking force by electron trapping. Then I would like to conclude my presentations. Uh, in our uh, photoluminescence mapping measurements, the dislocation grid velocity in 4 HC concarbide exhibits a spreading dependence of the uh, excitation intensities. Uh, this uh, peculiar result suggests that the driving force for the enhanced dislocation grid is the effective formation energy of the shock stacking force, uh, which becomes uh, negative in the magnitude proportional to the radiation intensity. Uh, thank you for your kind attention.